Guys, this book, <laughs> this book really changed my life and I think it can change yours as well. Let me show you how. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Greg and I'm an online entrepreneur creating content that will help you become more productive and mindful. If those topics interest you, then subscribe below and join our amazing community. Today, I want to talk about this amazing book called The Art of Living, written by a famous Vietnamese Buddhist monk called Thich Nhat Hanh. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. If I didn't, I'm sorry, but um, I think it should be somehow correct. In this video, I'm gonna present my top three learnings from this book. Um, I'll tell you how it changed or how it affected my life. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you a couple of steps that I learned in this book that will help you live a more meaningful and mindful life. So if you're ready, let's just begin. Before I share my three learnings with you, let me tell you a quick summary of this book. So this book basically talks about Buddhism, about how Buddhism can help you live a more meaningful, a more mindful, more happy life. And it shows basically a direct step-by-step -step process, um, a lot of different learnings, a, a lot of different know-how, a lot of different stories that will help you live a more happy life in this moment. And when I started reading this book, I wasn't really sure if I'll be able to implement those learnings in this, you know, in my life, in my modern life, uh, because these two worlds, like the Buddhist world and then the real modern life, the real modern world are so different. But I was really shocked when I started implementing some of the stuff, some of the learnings from the book. So the first main learning from this book is there are seven main teachings to ultimate life. First, there's emptiness. Now, emptiness simply means you need to be mindful, you need to live in the present. And this book gives you a couple of uh, concrete suggestions uh, how you can do this. Uh, I'm gonna sh share them with you at the end of the video. The second teaching is signlessness. Now, this means that we always search for certain signs, for certain patterns, but somehow we shouldn't do that always. Because, for example, if you look at the cloud outside, that's really an amazing example. If you first see the cloud, and then all of a sudden the cloud disappears, right? At least that's what you think, and that's what you see. So there's only sun. What happens is, after a couple of weeks or after a couple of months, this exact cloud that you saw turns into a cup of coffee or tea that you have for breakfast. I mean, if that is shocking, then I don't know what it is. Then the third teaching is aimlessness. Now, we always aim for something, we strive for something, we are uh, always moving towards a certain goal, but you already have everything you need to have to be happy right now in this moment. At least that's the teaching from the book. The next teaching is impermanence, which basically means nothing is permanent. So we should really, uh, truly enjoy our life a bit more than we do right now. Because as I said, there's nothing is permanent, not even our life, obviously. Um, so you have this one moment, this moment right now, that is the most important one, and you should really focus on it. Then there is non-craving. Um, we mentioned this before, craving, we always crave something, we always want something. Um, but yeah, you don't need um, nothing else than you have right now to be truly happy. Letting go is the next one. Um, we have so many things that bother us. Um, you know, our minds are full of different stuff, full of different thoughts. We're really suffering because of that. And if we learn something to let it go, to let certain stuff go, pass through us, I think our lives would be so much easier. And last but not least, Nirvana. Nirvana is right now. So we usually experience Nirvana when the flames of our anger cool down. That's when it happens. And it can happen right now. So you don't have to wait to die or whatever. It can happen right now. It can happen every single day. All right, that's the first learning. The second learning is that we need to abandon our current view of life if you wanna learn something new, if you wanna grow, if you wanna change. Now, as I learned from this book is that Buddhists don't really believe in uh, birth and death. They, they believe that, well, we know from the quantum physics that we are made out of energy and energy cannot be created or destroyed. So basically we just transform, you know, from one form to another and Obviously, uh, we are starting to understand this now and it's really mind-boggling um, and it's even more mind-boggling to, you know, kind of a, try to understand this and, and live by this or truly, really truly understand this deep in your heart. Uh, it's really, really hard at the beginning. But if you want to do that, you need to abandon your, your current view of life because otherwise you will never be able to understand this, to kind of uh, internalize it. Um, so yeah, that's why this, this learning is so important. And last but not least, insights set you free. Now, let's say you crave something, you want something. For example, 
let's say you want to be famous, all right? Now, you know that if you want to be famous, you're really putting lots of focus on that and it takes your time, your energy, it makes you stressed. Uh, it's really some a road you don't want to go on. And you understand this, you know you want it, but you understand you don't want to go there, but you somehow have to go and you usually go if you crave it. Now to, to really identify what we crave and why do we crave something, we need to stop for a second and really go into our cravings, really try to understand what's happening, why do we want something, uh, what's the hook behind it, what exactly got us on this path, what exactly started this process of this craving, and also what's the suffering behind it, what happens if we don't get what we want. Because the only way not to suffer is to do exactly that, to follow this process and because if you do that, uh, then you will be able to let it go. You'll be able to understand, let it go. And then you'll be able to live in, in, in this moment, which is a super nice, beautiful moment. Um, and it's really empowering. It's really powerful. So try to do that and try to remember insights set us free. By the way, guys, if you like this video, please press the like button below. So how does this book change me? Well, it showed an alternative way of life. Uh, a way of life that is meaningful, that is mindful, that is uh, full of happiness and joy. Of course, I still have some issues to implement this in my everyday life. Uh, there's still stuff that bother me, um, you know, but, but really it's so much better. It, it had such a big, such a profound impact on me uh, because once you start understanding those things, um, how well we have more than enough than we have right now and we don't have to always uh, strive for more, it's so, well, it's relaxing. You can just, you know, you can breathe out and you have so much more energy. It's like, you know, there's like certain blockages and you just like kind of disappear. It's really powerful, it's really powerful. Now, which action should you take to go on this path of mindfulness? Well, from the book, the first thing I learned is obviously there's meditation. You, you should consider start meditating. Uh, I've been doing it for many years and I love it. Soon I'll uh, be posting a cool video about my 30 day experience uh, where I was made it every single day. So subscribe below and um, you'll be informed when the new video is published. Uh, but yeah, obviously there are different types of meditation published in this book. Um, so if you want to learn about them, check them out. Uh, but obviously you can find different apps and stuff where you can learn about meditating. One cool thing is you can do uh, this so-called standing meditation um, so while, or walking meditation. So while, while you're walking on streets, you can focus on your breathing. Um, and it's really powerful. Uh, it's so hard to do, but it's really powerful. So if you want to try the walking meditation, um, here's what you have to do. First, you breathe in and then you count how many steps you make uh, before you breathe out. And when you breathe out, uh, you again count how many steps you make before you breathe in. Um, I'm trying it now um, and it's actually pretty cool. Now people look at me kind of weirdly because first of all, I'm vlogging, I'm using my camera and secondly, <laughs> Uh, yeah, because it's, um, well, it's, uh, it's kind of strange being so focused and stuff, but otherwise, yeah, it works really, really well. So yeah, try it out. And the second thing you need to do is uh, practice the art of relaxation. Now, what we usually do is we relax after we are tired. So we get tired and then we say, okay, now we're gonna relax. Or sometimes we don't even do that. We just say, well, we should relax, but we don't have time for that, right? So if you do this before, so you start relaxing before you actually get tired, I mean, this is something important because you will never have a break, you will never get sick, your immune system will always be up and you have so much energy every single day. So you should practice this because it's not easy to do. Um, you need to unlearn what you already know about um, relaxation. And once you do that, you can use this power of relaxation to uh, quickly recover, get your energy back and well, thrive. Cool, and the best quote from this book, let me read for you. As soon as there is stopping, there is happiness and there is peace. I mean, so empowering, I love it so much. Cool guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget subscribing to this channel. Uh, don't forget to follow Your Inception on Facebook and Instagram and I hope to see you soon again. Take care.